Hey everybody, Christopher Odd here, and uh, this is Neo. So, uh, Neo's been on the radar for a little while now. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, you can think of it as a... There's a very simple explanation, but like a more... Samurai Dark Souls, if that makes sense. Um, I think they're doing enough things that are unique to kind of separate it, but... It's really cool that Dark Souls allowed for all of these types of games to come out. From my understanding, the story is a little bit lighter, um, but the combat's just as intense, and I'm looking forward to it. So, why don't we just jump in and uh, see what this is all about. Thank you very much to Sony, by the way, for giving me a copy that I could play for you guys. Really appreciate that. And um, they've been doing a lot of good things supporting streamers and, and the like lately, so very cool to see. However, shall we go? Let's go. Some call it a miraculous stone. The Philosopher's Stone. The Queen of England remains locked in combat. With Spain. The country where the sun never sets for control of the entire world. Her forces weakening with every battle. The queen and her inner circle turn to divination and alchemy, hiring pirates like us to find them Rita for them. With that power, they managed to defeat the invincible Spanish Armada. But now it seems they want to keep their methods a secret. The Tower of London is an imposing fortress built by King William I in order to keep London safe. It has since gone on to be used as a prison for traitors and execution grounds for criminals. Londoners believe that if the many crows living within its walls were to abandon it, the tower would collapse and London itself would be destroyed. Okay, I'm in. It seems death won't stop chasing me. Death is coming for you. April 1598, Tower of London. Whoa. Okay. Entry added to Amrita Memories. Quick attack, strong attack. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay. This door is locked. Well, looks like this might be our way out then. <laughs> feels really like... Okay, this is cool. The combat feels right already. This is a good sign. Oh. When I had the chance. Hey, what are you doing? Sprint hold? Oh, hello. Let's fight him. Uh. 
I don't know if we've got like rolling and stuff. He's actually he's quite strong. Kick him while he's down. Oh boy. Oh boy, come on. Hello. Dungeon key and a bastard sword. That'll be much better than what we have right now. Question is, how do we actually use it? <laughs> we have gestures. Okay, equipment. Here we go. Let's throw this on. So there's a familiarity trait here. Uh, does it tell us anything about this? Indicates how much you've used an item. The higher your familiarity, the stronger an item's abilities, and the more Amrita you will obtain when you offer the item at a shrine. Okay, attack, special effects, critical, change to attack. Okay, so we'll get into all of this stuff at some point here. We also picked up the key. So, mission level one, the man with the guardian spirit, mission requirements, escape the Tower of London. There were a couple of things that we picked up. So we've got the dungeon key. And then we were adding things to Amrita Memories here. We'll check that out later. Oh. Does this open everything, I wonder? Oh, we actually... We go pretty quick. I guess yourself is your only savior. Guard. Ah, there, okay. So we can jump back and forth. We're actually, it's, we're so fast. It's incredible. I'm expecting it to be a little bit heavier, but it's, it's really quick. Let's just check both sides here. Okay, Tower of London guard boots. Status menu, and then tells us we can equip there. Another bastard sword. Okay, so it appears that we're gonna get multiple weapons here. I don't suppose. Okay, I guess we can equip both. We got some boots as well. Damage reduction and key. I think, from what I understand, key is like your stamina. And then let's check these memories here. Ah, uh, so these are like. Tips, basically. There might be more to this. Yeah, people, background, tutorial stuff. Okay, I'll get into that in a bit. Tutorial stuff, I don't think I need to show you guys all that much. Okay, medicine. So we can add shortcuts. Chain shortcut is two, R2. So we probably have to throw that on in here. Shortcut one, say medicine. Okay. Oh, it's got that very, like, Soulsy vibe. Tower of London guard coat. Nice. That's cool. Apparently there's tons of loot as well, which is gonna be really interesting, I think. I think we're getting closer to the outside. Let's actually heal up here. Oh. There's only one way through. Come on. Okay, so I'm gonna have to watch how much of this, how much energy I'm spending here. There are a couple points where I just exhaust myself. Oh. Goodbye. 
by. The combat is very actually is actually quite different from Dark Souls. I can already tell I'm gonna love this. That guy has no idea that we're coming for him. Oh, hello. Oh boy! Come on! No! I don't know what we did there, but that was actually cool. Okay, this is this is awesome. I'm digging this. I wasn't quite sure what to expect, but this is great. Okay, we're getting medicine all over the place, understandable. Got some pants, finally. Let's throw these on. We're gonna end up leaving this place looking like one of them. Now, is this something we can get through? Not looking like it. I imagine that we have all types of different weapons and- whoa! Okay, she was in the cell, so I'm sure she's fine. Pray. So she's gonna kinda guide us, I guess. I think that just refills all of our health and- Well, stamina is already full. Okay. I wonder if enemies reset or anything. Man, that little, like, these sidesteps are so fast. I love it. Okay, change melee weapons, R1 plus left or right. Change ranged weapons, R1 plus up and down. Okay, so these are the two that we have equipped. So let's go in here and switch one out now for this Runka. Quick attack damage. Oh, wow, look at that thing. Hello. Now, do we want to continue forward? It looked like there might have been another way up here. I want to just see if this leads us anywhere. I'm so- this is- this is actually outstanding. I'm so pumped. Okay, more medicine. Looks like we're also getting- a limited amount of Avrita we can extract from this country, Kelly. Indeed, the pirates have served their purpose. The death of the leader of Japan will spark a war. And a wonderful opportunity to acquire more Amrita. Once tomorrow's execution takes place, we will get our hands on a compass that will lead us to that Amrita. With enough Amrita, we could subdue Spain. Perhaps even the world. The day when England reigns supreme is near. But our beloved queen thinks of Amrita as nothing more than gold or gemstones. We must find them before our nation's rivals do. Edward Kelly, you will go to Japan. Edward Kelly. It seems it would be to our advantage to keep the wars alive. We cannot gain Amrita if blood does not flow. Okay, so that's kind of re-explaining the intro a little bit. Um, They've hired these guys to go and get this Amrita, and now that they know of it, um, they want to get rid of them, it seems.
Goodbye. Oh, this feels so good. This feels so good. Okay, more medicine, more boots. We already have them. So let's clear out this area before we head back up there. Kind of getting that, like, labyrinth feel already. A battle axe. All right. I'm going to try experiment with a bunch of different weapons until I find something that I really like. Um, so you can see, like, there's an attack rating, but there's other benefits too, right? Like, there's parrying, there's break, uh, there's an attack multiplier. I'm not sure exactly how that works. Um, but... We'll figure it out as we go. Seems the store must be open from the other side. Okay. Let's head back down. Or up, I should say. Oh boy. Oh, a whiff! Oh yeah, okay, this hits hard. Let's see if we can wrap around these guys. Okay, gloves, there we go. Man, there's gonna be stuff just everywhere. Gloves worn by soldiers charged with protecting the Tower of London. The thick cow leather provides protection right up to the elbows. Cool. We're really fitting in now. Oh, can we not go in here? I would I doubt that they would want to come out, but you never know. Can't break anything so far. Oh, I see where this is. It's where we open up that chest. Slightly above it. And now we've got like the full thing, I believe. Head armor, we wear the hat. Hat worn by soldiers charged with protecting the Tower of London. It's made from soft wool and has a peak to keep sunlight out of the wearer's eyes. I still have this, like, instinctual feeling to attack with, like... The R1 and R2 buttons, but we're gonna have to practice. Sleep tight. Take another coat. It looks like we can see their stamina too. This is gonna be the door that was locked, I think. Yep. So now if we wanted to, we could hit the we could pray here. We don't really need to, but let's see if it resets anything. Yep. It sure does. Okay, we're close enough where it's not a huge impact. So if this wraps around, we must have to continue out this way. how close we can actually get without them noticing us. There's some limit to being able to sneak up to them for sure. 
More pants. We'll take it. Now, one of the things that I read about was that the gear that we're not using, uh, like the duplicates and stuff like that, we can basically use that to enhance our other gear. So it'll be interesting to see how that comes into play. All right, here we go. Let's switch. We can just switch mid-battle. This is good. This one's a little quicker. You can probably keep it a little bit more of a distance, too, but... I think the other one's dishing out way more damage. Another battle axe. Now, are they all exactly the same? No, this one actually... So it is a battle axe, and it looks like... Do we keep the same... Oh, interesting. So this is a level 4 battle axe. Uh, better than the one that we have that's like level 2. But we reset our familiarity, so that'll go down, but... The, the offset for this big of a jump is probably worth it, so... That's cool. Let's just be sure that we actually have it. Yeah, okay, it's the right one. We have a lot of medicine here. That's giving me a little bit of a little bit of comfort that will probably wear out soon. Oh boy. <laughs> the couple of times that I've ran up to attack somebody and I just don't attack them, it's because I'm using like the, I'm using the Dark Souls buttons. I'm using the Dark Souls buttons. That's going to take some getting used to. I wonder if you can change it. I bet you... Whoa. Hello. Now, can I draw aggro from one of you? Nope. Can draw aggro from both. I did it again! Oh, he parried me, I think. Yeah, this isn't easy. These guys are hitting hard. Now, where'd your friend go? Come on back. I think we lost him up here. He went right back. And he's got a battle axe, so let's be careful here. Nice. I don't know if we have, like, backstabs. Greedy. Nice. What else we got here? 
We see? What's this? Okay, so we've got medicine, and now we- Okay, we've got stone. Simple rocks is perfect size for throwing. Throw it at enemies to deal damage. Okay. Throw that into shortcut number two. These boots are basically the same, except there's subtle differences too. So one gives extra key, one gives extra toughness. Oh, interesting. This could, this could get pretty deep, actually. Here we go. I'm probably not saying this correctly at all. Kwisi, that correspond to the Haiza Yoroi in samurai armor, made from a steel sheet formed into two cylindrical shapes. They completely cover the body from the abdomen down to the knees, part of the armor worn by the arm guards of the Tower of London. So I think we'll throw this on. It's going to be a lot stronger than what we have. You can see defensive multipliers going up to 28. So let's throw that on. Now I don't know if there's like an encumbrance. Oh, at the top, equipment weight. 11.4 to 29.5, so 38.6. Is that going to slow us down, I wonder? Maybe. This coat's a little bit better. We now have a better battle axe. Or do we? Okay, melee weapon one. We're going to keep this battle axe right now. Number two, we have the Runka. Could maybe switch it out. I think it's okay. Gives us some options. Hello. Yet another battle axe. Okay, so this one has more special effects, like uh, human close combat damage, quick attack key reduction, quick attack break. Slightly less basic damage output, though. Human close combat damage. Let's take that, because that's seemingly what we're fighting up against. Okay, let's just check the other side. Man, these little- these boxes are very hard to see. Another Runka. So many- I can't believe how many weapons we have already. It's insane. Let's throw this one on. Let's see if we can get close. Yeah, okay, so if we're really quiet, we can just do it. And I guess the stones... We can maybe use to pull. Pull an enemy or a guard or something. Oh, boy. Oh, look, this is where we came through. Okay, okay. This was the room that we opened. It's intense how, like... Oh, we just reset them. Questionable. Even just in this first area, like, there's so much going on. Uh, I don't know if I like this. Using monsters like that to fight wars. Guess they got no more use for us. Look at this place. Torture chamber. These other pirates. The opponent is down and helpless. That's what they're trying to do to all of us who fought for queen and country. Cool. I really like how it explains this stuff. So when they're down, we can do triangle to do a final blow. Oh God! You, you wanted to kill me from the start. Okay, so let's check the, out these these memories here. So here's like the final blow. Pressing triangle near down, enemy will perform a final blow. Changing weapons, using items, sure. 
So that stuff's all basic. What's more interesting is this background stuff. So entertainment for the people. The citizens have little in the way of leisure activities. Their greatest entertainment takes the form of public execution of criminals. Whether young or old, rich or poor, not a soul in England would spare mercy for those held captive in the Tower of London. With a great hawk of meat in one hand and a mug of ale in the other, they would cheer ecstatically when a criminal met his bloody end. Then the Black Tower. From the time of its creation, the Tower of London has served as both home for Britain's rulers and execution grounds for its criminals. In more recent times, it has also become inhabited by a large number of ravens, ever since it became prohibited to kill them within the tower. The reason? A certain wizard proclaiming that the killing of crows and ravens would lead to the destruction of England itself. Now, every inch of the tower is riddled with the birds, giving the entire area an eerie, area, an eerie unsettling air. Oh, this is cool. Okay, I'm digging this. So we've kind of got the basics for what's happening right now. I'm interested to see how this gets flushed out. Let's head up for a second before we head back outside. This guy's not going to like this. Bit lazy there. Nice. Did I see something about a helm? Yes, a great helm and a bastard sword. So these colors, this must mean something. Um, kind of maybe like a rarity or something. See how we've got like a yellow? This one's blue and it has a lot more um, special effects. That must be it. So this one gives us way more defense. Um, we're up to about 50% encumbrance, but that's fine. And then we've got, like, toughness versus fire, water, wind, lightning, earth, poison, paralysis, yokai realm. I'm assuming we're going to learn about all of that as we go. Covers head completely from the neck up, offering great protection. Slits in front of the eyes afford the wearer a view of what's around. Part of the armor worn by the armed guards. Okay, let's throw it on. And then the runka... I wonder how this is sorted. Is it? I, I think it's just an order of what we pick up, actually. So right now we've got the axe equipped. Right, we switched out the level four for slightly less damage, but more human damage. And then we could switch back from the Runka to the Bastard Sword, just to try it out a bit. More of like a basic attack. Oh jeez. There's just like unlimited weapons. And of course we get a level 4 Runka now. Okay, let's go back to it. Sleep. Okay, so we can go up further yet, it looks like. Drop attack. Huh. Oh, so this is a guy we've already killed. Okay. This is awesome. Okay, let's double back. So a hat. Now it's got a down red arrow, which means I think it's probably not as good as the ones that we're carrying. Would that be a fair guess? Yes, it looks like 
the down arrow is the same as a defensive multiplier there. Now, do we... Whoa, hello. I feel like I'm still moving the same speed. So that additional weight isn't hampering me too much at the moment. Whoa. Whoa. Hello. Derek the Derek. <laughs> okay, Derek. Whoa, hello. Come on, Derek. Come on back, Derek. Oh, big greedy. Oh! Looks like we, like, broke him there for a second. Derek the Executioner is down. Ah, Whoa. It's you. The man with the guardian spirit. Uh. If I die, the secret of the stones dies with me. Let me show you what these stones can do. No. It's time for your execution. Whoa. Okay. What? Oh my god. Okay, that all of a sudden makes a little more sense. Oh! Shit. Alright. See what else Derek's got. Little retaliatory swing there. I gotcha, I gotcha. Now his... His purple bar is quite low. Whoa! Living weapon when I'm ready gauge is full. Okay. <laughs> this is awesome. Like this is this is outstanding. Ooh. Well done. Quite a feat. Look at the weapon now.
Death is an entry to life. During two years' voyage, the Helof was lost, the trow sank, while the hope vanished without a trace. The good news of the Blyder Boat's Hap was nothing but lies. Only Leifda remained. Ironic twist, for what awaited us in the Far East wasn't love, it was monsters and death. Before I begin my preparations for landfall, I leaf once more through that curious book I had chanced upon, recorded inside are the memoirs of a sailor who had once paid visit to the land of Zapangu. Precisely how this document wound up in the, in the hold of this ship, when its author clearly belonged to the crew of a different boat is beyond me, but here I am poring over its pages all the same, and not for the first time this voyage, I may add. What fascinated me above all else were the memoirs' many accounts of Zapangu's diverse armor and weaponry. Okay, choose your preferred weapon. So... I'm guessing that little intro, we're not- we might not be as strong as that. Um... And now we're gonna have to choose... a preferred weapon. Look at this. Okay, and it gives us attribute bonuses. So swords, single-handed sword, primarily slashing weapons with a wide attack range. Can also be used for thrust and has long reach. This is heart plus one. Attribute bonus skill plus one, a pair of swords, one held in each hand. A single blow from either blade lacks power, but they enable rapid consecutive attacks when used together. They make an excellent choice of weapon when surrounded by numerous assailants. Spears, long-handed weapon tipped with a blade, a superior reach enables rangy sweeping attacks. However, it will ricochet wildly if struck against a wall, making it a poor weapon for enclosed spaces. The axe, weapon with a thick heavy blade at one end, it's Weight makes it a slow weapon to swing, but also gives a considerable power. Enemies find its attacks difficult to deflect. And then the Kusari Gama, a weapon that combines a sickle and weighted chain. Mastery of this unusual weapon requires a deep understanding of many special techniques. The sickle allows for quick strikes in close range, and the chain and weight can be thrown to add range to the weapon's offensive repertoire. I mean, we've seen these all before. Let's go with the Kusari Gama. The sailor from the memoir seems to have spent some time in Zapangu and succeeded in keeping the company of samurai. He writes in detail of establishments in Zapangu called dojo, where people, including samurai, congregate for instruction in the martial disciplines. Just reading the sailor's vivid accounts, I feel as though I'm there in the flesh, watching these warriors as they train. The samurai is master of many armaments and trains for combat in every imaginable scenario. If I were to use another weapon, which one would I choose? Oh, cool. So we get to choose... Oh, great. Okay. Let's choose an axe then. So we have, like, a really strong weapon. And we have, um... Like, the dexterity-based weapon. And then we'll just kind of see where things go, because I don't know how things flush out later. Let's grab the axe. Memoir also asserts that the samurai are knowledgeable in the martial arts. First, they know which fighting stance to use in each situation. High, mid, or low. Second, after each attack, they ready themselves for their next strike by focusing their key or inner energy. 
Third, once their ki is readied, the samurai can use purification techniques to rid their surroundings of malevolence. I know not how to explain it, but I feel as though I have some innate ability to grasp all these concepts, and have experimented many times with each technique. The memoir states that Pengu is home to 8 million gods and other deities. Exactly how this figure was derived, I can only imagine, but as I cast my gaze to the shore, I am struck by the sensation that some mystical power has been keeping watch over me. It is an energy that reminds me of Seoris. Seoris? I'm not sure how that's pronounced. I pull out the memoir once more and survey each page until I arrive at the guardian spirit. The best match is the force that I am sensing. Okay. Choose your guardian spirit. So we have Kato, a wolf, guardian spirit of the fire elemental, strengthens the attacking power of those in its protection. Gives us extra strength. A shark, guardian spirit of the water elemental, amplifies the ability of those in its protection to sense enemies. Okay. And a hawk, the guardian spirit of the wind elemental, increases the evasive abilities of those in its protection. Skill plus one. Hmm. Amplifies the ability of those in its protection to sense enemies? I wonder how that works exactly. Attacking power is probably safe. Let's take evasive abilities. Skill plus one. So I guess this is us now. Close the memoir. Yeah, let's do it. If you're a first time player we're going to play in the tutorial, do you wish to begin a tutorial mission? Well, I guess that's not exactly what we just did. I thought that was a bit of a tutorial. I was wrong. Uh, but yeah, let's let's do it. Okay. I think what we'll do is we'll probably take a break depending on how this starts. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. This is... I'm really, really enjoying this. I wasn't sure about Neo, uh, and now I'm... That was exceptional. I love a couple of things. Number one, the combat's really good. It's different from Dark Souls, and that's great. Um, but it feels really, really good so far. Um, the second thing I like is, like, the little cutscenes that are happening. It seems like there's more of, um, attention to... A full-on story and less reliance on lore and things like that um, so that's going to be interesting to follow um, and it's supposed to be a little bit more light-hearted it's not supposed to be super heavy from my understanding and uh, I also like that we're getting tons of different gear to use and try I don't know if that's going to be the norm as we keep going but um, I'm enjoying it so far so let's see what happens here and um, uh, this may be the end but we'll see <laughs> Yoki to a 